Hey everyone, in this video, I'll be showing you how to set up GitHub code spaces to begin developing on Algorand. In this video, I'll be focusing specifically on our bootcamp repos, but this applies to any repo that has an Algorand dev container, and I'll show you what that means in just a bit. But to start, what you wanna do is head on over to our Algorand bootcamp org on GitHub and head to the link of the repository you want to start with. Most people should begin at the beginner level, so I'm going to go ahead and click on github.com slash Algorand Bootcamp TS Beginner EN. Now here, all we need to do to start setting up our environment is click on this green code button and you should be able to create a workspace. If you don't have that available, make sure you're signed in because if you're not signed in, you won't be able to create a code space. So I'm going to go ahead and click this plus button. That'll create a new code space. If you've previously created code spaces, you'll see them down here. For this video, I'm going to create a brand new code space. And what this is going to do, it's going to set up a virtual machine in the cloud that has everything you need for Algorand pre-installed on it. So what we'll see here is that this opens up a browser window with VS Code in it. So if you've used VS Code before, this is the exact same VS Code that you've used. However, this time it's running in our browser and connected to our virtual machine in the cloud. Now, what enables this to happen is this .devcontainer.json. This is the file that tells us all of the ports that we're gonna be using and what we need to do when we create and start our VM. So as we can see here, our commands are running. We first installed algo kit. So that's the first thing that we do to set up our environment. It does this automatically for you and it only needs to do it once. After it's done installing AlgoKit, then you'll be able to use it to build on Algorand. For those that aren't familiar with AlgoKit, it's basically an all-in-one command line tool that you can use throughout your development journey. You use it to initialize projects, manage dependencies, do some testing, run a local net, all sorts of features that we'll be getting into throughout the bootcamp series. And I'll be showing you a little bit about them in this video today. So while this is still running, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new terminal and show you an algo kit command. The first algo kit command you'll probably want to use is init. So to do so, I'm going to go ahead and run algo kit init. And what this will do is it'll give me a bunch of templates I can choose to start my project from. Each template serves a different purpose, but kind of the three main templates that we want to talk about are the Beaker, TealScript, and React, and then the full stack combines Beaker and full stack. The one we care about in this video and for our uh, developer bootcamp is TealScript. TealScript is a relatively new language that allows you to develop contracts in TypeScript. If you're just getting started and you want to learn the best language to develop on Algorand, TealScript is the best option right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose TealScript. Now, the next thing it's going to do is ask you to name your project. So I'm just going to name this TealScript demo. And what it's going to go ahead and do is not only create my project, but also install my dependencies. So it's going to take a bit to do the NPM install. And the nice thing is because this is uh, TypeScript, because TealScript is based in TypeScript, all our dependency management is done directly through NPM. So if you've done no development before, web development before, the dependency management is the exact same. And you'll see here that we have our template. And again, if you're familiar with Web2 development, this should look fairly familiar so far. Before I get into the files, I just wanna mention that there are recommended extensions. You don't have to install these if you're already a developer and you have your preferred extensions, you can install those manually but I'm gonna go ahead and install the extensions that's recommended. And primarily, we just have the extensions for Jest and ESLint. So once we init a project, it'll open up our readme. This will talk a little bit how we can use it and the commands we run, but I'm gonna show you in this video, so I'm just gonna close out. Now, over here on the left is all of our files. And most of these files, so these top level files, are just configuration files. And for getting started, you don't really need to worry about them. If you're familiar with Node development, you'll be right at home. There's a package JSON, your package lock, 
your config for Jest and your config for ESLint. And then of course your config for TypeScript. And all these configs apply to not only our test code, which is written in TypeScript using Jest, but also our contract code. So speaking of our contract code, let's go in and see how that looks. So if we come to this contracts directory and go to TealScript demo, we well, can see here our contract. Now remember when we initialize our project, we set the name to TealScript demo and that's where this name is coming from. So by default, your file name and your class name for your contract will be whatever name you give AlgoKit when you instantiate the project. Now let's take a look at this example project before we can, or example contract, before we continue to some of the other files uh, that we have here in our project. So this file, it looks like a regular TypeScript class because it is. You'll see here that we import contract from Algorand Foundation TealScript, and then we create a class that extends contract. And then we define two private methods. So we have one method called get sum that just sums two numbers, and then a method called get difference that will get the difference between two numbers, and it will always subtract the biggest number from the smallest. Uh, using this ternary expression. So these are two private methods. They are only callable internally within our contract. And then we have our public method. And our public method here is called do math. And you can see here it takes two numbers and a string operation or and a string that specifies an operation. So logic here is pretty simple. We simply say if the operation is sum, then we're going to call get sum. If it's difference, call this get difference. And if it's not summer difference, we're gonna throw an error. And then finally return our result. So here we can see that we define our methods, we set them to private, we can instantiate variables just like you can in a regular TypeScript function. In fact, all of these, uh, all these lines of code are valid TypeScript. If I were to copy and paste this into JS Fiddle, this code would run just fine. So even though this is a contract, we're still running a native TypeScript. And you also notice in addition to the native syntax, we also are leveraging native tooling like TSDoc to document our functions. This will provide useful IntelliSense, but also give us some other features that we'll take a look at in one second. So again, Contracts, tealscript demo.algo.ts is our contract file. But we also have these two other directories, artifacts and clients. So to actually generate our artifacts and compile our TypeScript contract, what we're going to do is we're going to run the npm run build script. And what this is going to do, if we scroll back up, we can see we run npm run compile contract, which calls tealscript, passes in our contract, and the directory we want to output artifacts to. And then we also call this generate client function, which takes in one of our artifacts and outputs a client. So let's first focus on these artifacts here in contracts artifacts uh, directory. We can ignore components for now. We'll get to that once we get to our front end uh, section in the bootcamp. But for now, let's focus on these top level uh, artifacts. So the first is an ABI file. This is a JSON description of all the methods in our contract and uh, what the arguments are. And you'll notice that we have our types and descriptions here that was auto generated from our types and our method signature and the description that we provided to TS doc. So we're leveraging TS doc syntax to generate this ABI file along with our method signatures we defined. So we can see here we have our one public do math method. And then we also have a public create application method. Now, just generating this alone isn't super useful. So let's talk about our other files. Arguably, the two most important files here are our uh, approval and clear teal files. For those that aren't familiar, Teal is the machine language that the Algorand node executes when executing a smart contract. So when we called our build script, 
we ran our TypeScript file through TealScript. So instead of running a TypeScript file through the TypeScript compiler to generate JavaScript, we ran it through the TealScript compiler to generate Teal. You don't need to go into the exact details of how this Teal is generated. The important part here is that our high level language code in TypeScript resulted in this low level language code in Teal. And now we also one last, or we have two more files to go, but this is also a very important file. This is a JSON file that includes the ABI, but also some additional information like our state schema and our source code. We won't need to worry too much about this file, but what it's useful for is generating our client, which I'll talk about in just a second. But one last artifact I want to mention is this source map. This will go over, uh, this will highlight what line of teal maps to what line of teal script maps to what program counter in the VM. So this file you shouldn't need to manually use too often, but if you're in a deep debugging session, this can be very helpful. Now, the most important thing for actually interacting with our contract is this clients. So the second part of our build script ran generate client, which called this algokit gen generate function. And what this does is it generates a TypeScript file with a bunch of lines of code for interacting with our contract. All this code was pre-generated, so we didn't need to write this boilerplate ourselves. And now if we come to the template, take a look at our test file, we can see how that's actually used. We import the demo client from the auto-generated client. And then throughout our test, we can instantiate this client, create our application, and then call our methods by simply doing app client dot whatever our method name is and pass our parameters. We'll be going more in depth in how this actually works throughout the bootcamp series, but this goes to show how easy it is to take our contract, auto-generate this client and import it and begin using it. It's just a couple of lines of code, which makes it really nice. Now to run these tests, I can go ahead and do an npm run test. And that's going to compile and generate the contract or generate the client for me again. And then it's going to run the test, which I've written here in jest. And we can see here that our tests have passed. So if we take a look at our logs, what has happened is it logged all of our transaction IDs that we sent to our network. Now you might be asking, what network are we sending them to? These transactions happen really fast and we know block times are algorand are roughly 3.3 seconds. So all of our testing was actually done on a local network that was instantiated by AlgoKit. So in the code space, every time you create a code space, it'll start your local network. If you need to manually start your local network, you can do an AlgoKit local net status. And that'll give you all your information about your network that you need to know. Now, if for some reason your network stopped or you want to stop your network, let me show you this first. We can run algokit local net stop, and that'll use Docker to stop your local network. Sometimes it takes a second for the container to exit safely. And then we can also run algokit local net start to start up our network. And so whenever you run your tests, just make sure you have your local network running. Now, one other thing specifically for code space that you need to make sure you do is come on over to your ports tab and make sure you change your port visibility to public for 4001, 4002, and 8980. And when we eventually get to a front end, we'll also need to make that port public but we aren't running that yet, so there's no need to do that now. Opening your ports is something you only have to do in code spaces, but pretty much the rest of this content in the bootcamp series is gonna to apply to both local net or local environment and code spaces. If you're interested in how to set up your local environment, which I recommend most developers do at some point in their development journey, you can check out the other video that's an introduction to this series using a local development environment before you get started with the rest of the content. So as I mentioned, this was an introduction to the bootcamp content. After viewing this video, 
you should be ready to use code spaces to begin following along the bootcamp content and learn how we can leverage this directory structure, this project that we just learned about to build your own project. Hope to see you then.